all right? And even some of our old hermit curmudgeon neighbors that think we're typhoid Marys, they came <laughs> and laughed and had a good time, all right? So, so it was, it was, it's a big deal. So this, this event thing, you know, if you're an introvert and you're scared about that, um, just, just get a partner, maybe a niece, a nephew, uh, you know, a, 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 an extroverted spouse, a, a friend, an aunt, an uncle, a, a neighbor, somebody at church, somebody you know. Right? The point is there are, there are gifts and talents for all this collaboration. That's the point. There's gifts and talents for all this collaboration. Are your, so you've had great success with events, but my question to you is, are, are your guests local? What about those of us who live in very rural areas? Uh, do you expect your success based on your, your location? Um, so we're on a dirt road. Now we're not, um, and are, you're on a dirt road. Well, you're you're you, you're urban. Um, we're 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 on we're on a dirt road that that you can't you can't get there from here. I mean, it's those of you who've been, how many of you have ever been to our place? Yeah, um, it ain't on the main drag, is it? Um, uh, but but people people like like for for the for for the Temple Grandin thing, we had people uh, probably of those three hundred. I would say 200 drove more than 100 miles to get there. Okay, uh, there certainly is a you know there there's a there's there are rings okay out and depending on the power of your event and, and this is why I I think that we have not done this yet but I'm dying to uh, is to hook up with some of these ecotourism outfits that do ecotourism. I mean, you're getting people coming out to see the Eagles. And so uh, we, don't have, we don't have that to show, but we've got other things to show. We'll give you some Eagles. <laughs> you give us some Eagles. We don't want any of those Eagles. Um, uh, but but what, what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is, you don't have to have a Disney farm to attract people is what I'm getting at. People are hungry for real, non-fantasy infotainment. They want to learn something? I think it makes a difference. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, they, they want to learn something and they want to be entertained at the same time. And people are so far removed from this that it doesn't take a lot to, to, to get some traction with this. Okay? And so, uh, so yeah. The point is. Success usually requires working with people you wouldn't normally spend time with. That's a takeaway, I hope, from this discussion. Success, success requires spending time with people you wouldn't normally spend time with. All right? That means if you're a Republican, you might have to work with a Democrat. That means if you're a Libertarian, you might have to work with a Socialist. That means if you're a livestock person, you might have to work with a vegetable person. That means if you're a vegetable, we don't, we don't stop them grass farmers, you only don't attract too many vegetable people, so I don't have to go the other way. But um, are you with me? You're gonna have to eclectically move out of your little comfort zone, your little silo, and work with people, but I'm telling you, the power of collaboration is unbelievable unbelievable maybe you've got a uh, we've worked with um, we worked with a a, a, a food delivery service um, and and they put together a bus trip to us um, and remember when I say bus trips usually that means there's a meal involved so you can charge 10 bucks for the meal so if you've got 60 people on the bus you're automatically Six hundred to twelve hundred dollars. Twenty, you know, if it's a really nice one, fifteen. All right. Uh, so you're up there toward a thousand with your with your meal, and then a museum entry fee. You know, for, for is going to be fifteen twenty bucks a person. Okay. So you're you know you're up there in the in the three thousand dollar range. Okay. And all those people are paying fifty bucks. They've got a day trip. You know, uh, a, a day trip out, 
People do this all the time. My mom is going to be 96 in December, and she goes on, what, Sherry, probably half a dozen at least, maybe 10, I don't know, of these parks and rec day trips, day bus trips a year. She's 96, and she, oh, yeah, we went on a mystery, and, and, and they actually do mystery tours, you know, where they don't tell you where you're going. You just, you just pay your 100 bucks. And you all get on the bus at 5 in the morning. I have no idea where we're going. And it might be to a haunted house. It might be to where the, one of the last ones she went on was a mystery tour was uh, all about um, Loretta Lynn. Uh, she grew up up in Winchester. So they went, you know, two hours up to Winchester, went through her birthplace, her home. And then they had lunch. They had lunch at a diner that brought in a Loretta Lynn impersonator to sing for them during lunch, okay? But this, this stuff is all the time. I, um, I remember Alan Nation used to always say, there's way more money in fantasy than in reality. Way more money in fantasy than reality. There's a book out called Selling the Invisible. And the basic premise of the book is that the, the, the emotional fantasy nuances around a product are always more valuable than the product itself. You think you're selling grass-finished beef. You're selling, you're selling a mystique. You're selling an aura of health and an aura of, of, of participatory uh, you know, ecology. Are you with me? All right. So we, we, need, we, need to get, we need to get beyond our, you know, I'm, a, I'm selling pork chops and eggs and, and chicken, and we need to understand we're selling a, a, a planetary solution. Is that what Beyond Burgers are? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what Beyond Burgers are. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're selling. Every single message that you see from them, we're going we're gonna, to... Solve the, we're going to get rid of this livestock. And, um, oh, I mean, it, it just, it's, y you vacillate between just frustration, fury. And all. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is. And, and, and the thing about it is, it, it seems like their, their messaging is, is, they don't show all the soybean, the, the GMO monocrop soybeans coming in to feed those vats. You notice they never do that. It, it's as, as, as if it, their, 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 their mystique message is we just, we just have this, this, this uh, wonderful fermenting tank like fine wine and it just abracadabra and we have impossible burgers. You know? Soil just, green. Yeah, it's, it, it is soil and green. Then, and they just, they just magically appear. It's just amazing. Um, but, but yeah, you're exactly right. They're not selling an impossible burger. They're selling you can participate in planetary health. And that's why we need to sound bite that on our side and, 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 uh, and, and compress our message into you know, very uh, articulate little pieces as well. So, yeah, that's exactly right. So, um, are, are there any questions on what we've got? Yes? If, if you were starting out a farm tour, where would be that sweet spot for the charge for it? The sweet spot to charge for it? Yeah. Uh, the sweet spot to charge for a farm tour, well, you know, what are you offering? Obviously, if you offer a meal, that changes it completely. And what kind of a meal? You know, is it a sack lunch? That, a barbecue. Okay, so it's, it's a nice... Barbecue, okay, so, so that kind of meal is going to be, you know, in the 20s, in the 20-ish, 20 20-ish, 20 you know, 18 to 22, all right? Uh, so say 20-ish. And then when you think about entertainment, what's a, what does a movie cost? It's going to a movie. I don't know because I don't go, but does, any, does anybody here go? <laughs> Man, we are really out of it here, aren't we? Well, um, I mean... What, 10, 20, 12? Um, okay, so this is better than a movie. This is real, okay? So think about what, like, um, a play in your, you know, like, if you have a, a, a play group, a theater group, 
We have Blackfriars Theater in our area, Shannon Arts, okay? So we've got these amateur theaters. If you're gonna go out to a, to a live play drama theater, it's gonna be 20 bucks, roughly, for, for a ticket. Um, if you're gonna go hear the, you know, the, uh, I think last, actually tonight, the, um, the Army Jazz Band is playing in Waynesboro. You know, those are 25, 30 buck tickets. I mean, good grief, Shania Twain. I mean, now you're at the, you know, 100, 100. So anyway, people, what I'm saying is people don't mind paying. If you're going to get dinner theater, 50 bucks is definitely not out of line. Everybody follow me on that? Okay. And if you've got 50, 60 people, okay, you're looking at 2,500, 300, 3,000 bucks. And, and, and remember, this is not a standalone thing. All of these people are gonna get a coupon for $10 off their, their first purchase with you, all right? So you can capture their email, capture them as a customer. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna make sure that your, whatever, your farm store is open so they can buy stuff on their way out. Uh, I mean, there, there's all sorts of ways that you can, so, so Alan Nation used to say, never think about one sale. You're never thinking about a sale. You're always thinking that today's sale is the springboard for tomorrow's repeat. Remember that. Every single sale you're, you're, is never a, um, a, a done deal, okay? you know, uh, whatever, they, they bought and they're done and they're out, all right, no. Every sale is a springboard. You're always thinking, how can I springboard another, another turn of that wheel, another turn on, okay? So your event, yes, it needs to pay for itself, but half of the reason for having the event is to, is to generate activity and new customers, okay? Maybe you have a really great um, you know, uh, band in your area, you know, some, some folks that are good, uh, you can ha have an event, okay? I mean, there's, there's a million events. The um, eco events, too, are, are really good. Any kind of class, like I said, you know, we've done these cheese classes. Um, goodness, you can do uh, culinary classes, uh, lacto ferment. we've done uh, fermentation classes. You can do um, how to cut up a chicken. Uh, you could do, you could do a, an Instapot class. How to use an Instapot. And part of the class is you buy a, a, a pallet load of Instapots at wholesale and you, and you they come to class and, and everybody gets an Instapot. Okay, I, I mean, phew. If I get up here and start going down this road, I mean, I'm pretty creative, okay? Um, but, 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 but I hope this kind of gets your juices going, okay? You're, you're thinking about um, uh, infotainment. All right. Differentiation, it goes without saying that differentiation has to be, um, has to be epiphanal. So you can't just have a ho-hum product, okay? And, uh, and this is why... Uh, this is why we spend so much time talking about how do we raise aha beef, pork, chicken, eggs, okay? So it is, a, wow, I've never had anything like this before. Um, you know, I, 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 at, at, this, if, at this event with Rory Feek uh, Sunday, um, we had, a, I had one of the guys that came from the community happens to be a chef. And... I made sure, I, I went up to him as we were going through the potluck line, Teresa had made a whole bunch of pulled pork, uh, barbecued pulled pork in uh, you know, crock pots and slow cookers. And she had all of them set out there on the thing. And I said, I said uh, make sure you, you get some of our pulled, because he's never had any of our stuff. And um, he's, from, he's from about 30 miles away. And uh, so he went through and he came to me after the, the thing. He said, that was fantastic. And can we talk about starting a diner? Really? So you just never know. 
you know, I've wanted to start a diner for, you know, 10 years. Um, clean food, fast food, you know, simple menu and, and uh, local. So anyway, um, you just never know. So um, you are going to have to have bathrooms. Porta potties work. One should be a handicapped. All right. Um, and you have to have, uh, if you're going to have an event, uh, let, me, let me just move that forward a little bit. So, so last winter, um, we, we did some brainstorming sessions on weak links with the whole group of us. And what came out of that was uh, everybody feeling reluctant to do events because we just weren't we're a functional farm, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not Disney, okay? And so, this year, here's what we added. We spent more than we would have liked on a nice level, graded, with white parking strips, parking lot, okay? We invested in, uh, we've got a guy now on staff that's a master woodworker, and he made a couple of beautiful, um, on the bandsaw mill, you know, some, some, some curvy pieces of wood, cut them in half and then etched into them signage. So they're just really, you know, first class sharp signs for clear parking, for where the store is, the parking lot, okay? Here's the thing. When people come out to you in the country, they get lost getting to you. They... They're, they're, they're not going toward town. They feel like they're going like to the edge of the earth. And, uh, and they come with a bit of, they're, they're a little bit of intimidated, okay? Um, and so the sooner we can greet them with welcome signs, you're here, uh, you found the place, their, their anxiety level starts to drop, okay? If they drive in, well, where, where, where do I park? I mean, to us, it's second nature. Well, you come, you know. No, they, to them, it's not second nature. I mean, I could tell you stories all the rest of the day of the people go out behind that. You know, you think you give them very clear directions. Next thing you know, they're walking back covered in mud. They did, they went the other way into the slough and Axel buried their Honda and we got to go out with a tractor and pull them out. Okay? I mean, it just, it just happens. Okay? The, and they don't have a clue. They don't know what that a bunch of cattails means. It's probably a pond. I mean, they don't know this stuff, okay? So you've got to have it clearly marked, all right? Uh, clearly marked where they're going to go. Take that anxiety off. Have a couple porta potties there. Uh, mark your, if you're going to have a farm store, mark your store very clear. Here's the, where the store is. Um, uh, you know, you, 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 You've got to be welcoming. So the other things we did, so we did a, we did a, we did a really formal, uh, nice level uh, entrance exit parking lot this year. That was our huge, big monetary investment. Littler things that we did, um, we built a half a dozen picnic tables. And we put them out, and so we moved one of our, the, 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 the book barn where all my books are stored. We yanked that off of its foundation jackhammered up the concrete slab, pulled the whole thing away to open up an area near the farm store for these picnic tables. So we could place them in under some persimmon trees and some pawpaws and some apple trees, pretty little, pretty little area in there. And then we made a children's playground. And let me tell you, and I've got to tell you, because I, I am now vindicated. You know, I come here and you think I'm really cool. When I go home, I'm somebody to roll eyes at, okay? <laughs> Why do you have kids? So somebody will roll their eyes at you, right? <laughs> I'm not the guru at home, all right? So for 10, I, 10 years ago, I went to this farm in Indiana, and they were, they were a total agritainment farm, I and mean, that's what they did, okay? Um, their money was from agritainment, and they had all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, they had they had huge. Um, they'd gone gotten surgeons' uh, surgery tubing, all right, heavy duty surgery tubing, 
and made massive um, launchers for potatoes and little pumpkins, you know, at, at Target's out here, you know, for a dollar, you, you know, you get three pumpkins and you can launch them out here at this, you know, all, they had a, they had a little, um, they had a little area, uh, not as big as this room, but it, it was, it was, I don't think it was concrete, but it was nice packed gravel, and they had about 10 um, little uh, uh, track, pedal, pedal tractors, you know, so kids could, you know, run their tractors around. They had a, they had a train, Carolyn, um, but it wasn't a track train. It was a train, they'd taken uh, plastic barrels and they cut out half of them, put a little wooden seat in there, mounted a little steering wheel in there, put a hitch on the front and the back, and they, with a four-wheeler, an ATV, they could pull about 20 of these little 55-gallon drum plastic train cars around the farm to do kid, you know, kid tours. Um, I mean, this stuff, this stuff is fantastic, okay? I mean, it's just great. So, one of the things that they had that I brought home, and I've been talking about it for 10 years, and I get the eyes rolled at me, um, is, was a corn box. So we're all familiar with a sandbox, okay? Well, there's sandboxes everywhere. But a corn box? I mean, for kids to be able to get into corn, you know, it's slick, it's big pieces, it's not all gritty, you know, it doesn't get in all your, now, now you know, it is dusty, okay? But how many kids have played in a corn box? Not very many. Every kid's played in a sandbox.